down just a little. Today, you're going to learn something that you need to know. Mark Anderson, tell us what we're going to learn today. Uh, well, today we're going to talk about uh, painting uh, translucent water, you know, how you uh, can see into the water, but then there's also reflections on top of the water. Uh, so we're going to get into a little bit of how all that works and uh, how to simplify it in your painting and to make it look convincing. Cool. Well, I think water is one of those things that if you, if it's a, a little intimidating because it's, it's moving. So yeah. you're going to show us how to overcome that and how to really focus in and, and understand what's going on when you're painting water. Yeah, that's, that's the plan. <laughs> okay. Well, 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 let's get right to it. Let's do it. All right. Okay. All right. So we're moving the camera. Oh, look at that. Okay. So you've already done something here. Tell us about what you've done. Yeah, so I'm working on this uh, this coastal scene. This is uh, Madeline Island in uh, northern Wisconsin on Lake Superior. Um, so I've kind of already blocked in, well, I've done, done a wash on the water. So this is just thinned down, um, thinned down paint, thinned with Gamsol. Um, got some, you know, blue, a little uh, uh, transparent red oxide kind of bleeding into that. Um, but I, I wanted to establish this area right here because this is more of the area of interest, but then we're going to have um, some more interesting stuff happening in the water. So I wanted to have this established at least uh, to start with um, so we can move into the uh, move into the water. Okay, cool. Um, so the, one of the things about water um, that does make it tricky is that it has both uh, reflective qualities and uh, you can actually see into it. So um with waves you know in in the foreground underneath you um you're actually seeing through the water but as uh as you're seeing the reflection of the sky at more of a um uh, obtuse angle you're just seeing more reflection so back here we're not going to see into the water we'll see sky reflection down here we'll see into the water a little bit more but there will still be some reflection on the uh on the top of the water now, it looks like I can see a little bit of reflection of those rocks already. Did you kind of state that in a little bit? So th that's just some of my underpainting. So some of the, uh, um, some of my initial wash, so it's some of this transparent red oxide, just letting that bleed into the, uh, the water, um, that kind of has that reflective effect. Okay. Um, so I, I can just leave some of that uh, in the finished painting. I don't have to actually paint all the reflections. Some of that's just done uh, with my initial blocking. Okay. So what are you going to do first here? So we're going to start out with um, some of the shadows underneath the water. Which I'm seeing a little bit of kind of in this foreground area. So there's a rock underneath the water right here. I don't know if we have a reference image or not. So it looks like you're painting fairly dry brush. Yeah. Uh, so for some of this, I'm going to add a little bit of a medium um, just to thin it down slightly. But um, I do like to keep my darker values a little bit, um, uh, let them sit a little bit flatter so they're not catching too much. So the surface of the paint isn't catching too much light. Right. So at this stage, I'm really thinking about big, uh, big shapes. Um, not so much uh, getting into each individual wave yet, because um, there are a lot of uh, ripples in the water, um, even in this area. But I'm certainly not going to paint all of that in. You guys have. <laughs> make sure you put them in the comments tell us where you're watching from so you're picking up some of the color of the trees but you're making it a little bit darker yeah so uh, so with reflections they're they're often not as dark as the object that they're reflecting um, so the actual reflections of the trees won't be as dark, but the problem is here, I'm seeing into the water as well. So that's making this area a bit darker. 
So that's why water's so tricky. We're, we're dealing with reflections and the transparency of the water at the same time. Feels very dry brush. Yeah, it is uh, um, quite a bit. And this, uh, the surface that I'm working on has a little bit of texture. So this is a uh, um, birch plywood. Um, so it's got a little bit of a tooth to it. Um, and I like a little bit of that, uh, you know, that dry brush effect. Let some of that, uh, that underpainting show through. So I can leave just some of these color notes here for a little bit if I want to work work around the uh, the rest of the painting, uh, which I am going to do. So you intentionally want that dry brush look so you get some of that texture in there. I'm sorry? You want some of that texture in there in the back that's where the white is showing through a little bit. Is that right? Yeah. If I if I do my brush strokes horizontally like this, um, just a little bit of that can kind of imply uh, waves. Yeah. Um, so you can use that to your advantage uh, in all sorts of ways. It looks like you just changed the color for this this part. Yep. Um, so, so I'm starting a, a gradient, kind of uh, the inverse of what's happening in the sky. At the horizon, I've got a little bit more of a violet gray. Uh, but as we come down, um, I'm getting some of this more cerulean. So we're going a little bit more green, more towards uh, ultramarine. So we're going to do uh, the exact opposite, going down in the water. That's how you create depth, is to create that gradient. Yep. So having a having a lighter base coat allows you to have some of that showing through. That's done intentionally. Uh, yeah. Yep. And I won't always do this light of a an underpainting. At some in some places, um, I might go a little bit darker. Um, like I could have gone darker in this uh, reflection area. Uh, I just kind of 
didn't feel like it today. You know, sometimes the mood just doesn't hit you. Yeah. Uh, so here we're going from this uh, more cerulean, uh, starting to bend back towards a uh, ultramarine. Now this is fairly uh, fairly muted, um, mostly because of the uh, the temperature difference between uh, the rocks and the and the water. I didn't want to make this too blue. Otherwise, it'll just be a little too uh, too much contrast. Yeah, it'll fight you. you're really trying to draw attention to the rocks. Yeah, exactly. So tell me why you're leaving these spaces in there. Is that to create perspective? Yep. So, um, so yeah, we are dealing with perspective here. So the uh, the waves will get shorter uh, the further we get back, um, taller, uh, more in the foreground. So this space here, that'll be if we think of the the blue as the the top of the wave, that's where we're seeing the sky reflection. Uh, this would be more the face of the wave. So that plane is more facing you and you're actually starting to see into the water. Um, so I'll be uh, coming over that with a darker, darker color. Yeah. If you guys have questions, put them in the comments. Tell us where you're watching from. Okay, it looks like you're really great at down this time. Yep. So at a certain point, the water is now more underneath you. So even the reflective portion, you're going to be seeing through the water. So once I get down to about here, that's where I'm starting to add a little bit of green because the green has a little bit of a, or excuse me, the water has a little bit of a greenish uh, tint to it. Did a beautiful job on those rocks. Well, I'm anxious. I'll be anxious to see how you're going to actually make those feel like waves. Why don't we do this? Let's get the show started officially, and then we'll come back to you in just a, a, a few seconds. Okay. Let's do it. It's Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now, here's your host, Eric Rose. Hey there, welcome. Today we're learning how to paint translucent water. We're uh, doing a lesson every single day and have since COVID started. And so uh, every weekday at 12 noon. If you're new here, welcome. You can subscribe to us by just hitting the subscribe button on YouTube. Go to YouTube and look up Art School Live and uh, also give a follow on social. That'd be really terrific. Our guest today is Mark Anderson. Mark is a fabulous painter. He's up in the uh, Wisconsin. Uh, Door County area of Wisconsin, and uh, he just does incredible work. Uh, so we're showing you some of his work here, and you're going to learn how he's going to make water translucent today. So hang in there for that. We have a prize for you today. The prize is uh, you can win a one-year subscription to Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine, which is for collectors and artists. It's all about realism and representational painting. Um, and so uh, all you got to do to win is to put a comment in the comments section and we will hopefully pick you. All right. 
Uh, the winner of the value specs from the other day is Cindy Tucker in Calhoun, Georgia. Congratulations. And we have this free ebook for you, 201 Essential Plein Air Tips, Master the Art of Outdoor Painting. It's got a lot of great artists in it. Uh, just go to outdoorpainter.com slash ebook. Outdoorpainter.com slash ebook. Okay, now we're going to get back to our guest, Mark Anderson. Okay, take it away, Mark. All right. So we're uh, just kind of building in some of these uh, these these shapes. So we've got kind of an overall reflection shape, uh, reflecting reflection of the uh, the trees and the rocks, uh, and then we've got uh, more of a sky reflection over here. Um, and I'm just going to continue to build in um, some of the nuances within those shapes. Mark's going to be teaching on Plein Air Live. What are you going to be doing on Plein Air Live? Um, so I uh, did a demo at uh, Cave Point up here in uh, Door County. Um, so painting some more rocks like this, although uh, it was not a sunny day. It was a very foggy day, which was a lot of fun. So we're going to, um, get, we're going to learn how you do rocks like that because they're very special. They're very well done. Yeah, so in, in this case, um, these rocks were a lot about the uh, slight temperature shifts, you know, really warm, slightly warm, uh, and then that contrasted with the more shadow colors. Um, in the, uh, the Plain Air Live piece, it's a lot more about um, a lot of neutrals, uh, a lot of grays, warm grays, cool grays. Oh, that's important. All right. I'm trying to oscillate back and forth between these uh, uh, these cool greens and then some more uh, warmer yellow greens. Um, so some of that is reflection from the rocks. Some of it is uh, the rocks were seen beneath the surface. And uh, none of it has to be really that faithful to my, uh, my reference photo, um, to be honest, because a lot of this is, you know, uh, nature is insanely complex we don't need to copy all of it we just need to get the, the overall impression Okay, if you're just tuning in, our guest today is Mark Anderson, and he's teaching us about translucent water, how to paint it. Uh, Mark, there's a question about what kind of brush you're using. Um, so I have a whole bunch of uh, brushes that I'll be using. Um, I use a lot of uh, brushes from Rosemary and Company. Um, 
So a lot of these are the uh, Series 279s uh, long flats. Um, and then I mean, I've just got a whole bunch of everything. So uh, some filberts, bristle brushes, um, Egberts, synthetics, you name it. Um, but I really do like the um, those rosemary long flats. Um, Are you using any medium? Uh, at this stage, uh, no. Um, but my the medium I use is the uh, it's kind of a traditional mixture of um, five parts. Uh, well, I actually use Gamsol instead of a uh, Terp, and then um, linseed stand oil and uh, Demar varnish. Five parts. Uh, or, excuse me. Five parts uh, Gamsol, one part. Uh, linseed sand oil and one part Demar varnish, so it's a five one one ratio. Okay, I just put that in the in the comments, you guys. Tell us where you're watching from. I see Italy. I see Netherlands. I see the UK. Mark, you're just pulling them in from all over the world. What can I tell you, man? <laughs> you're a superstar. Oh, shucks. Oh, shucks. Such a good Midwestern attitude. Total <laughs> humility. I see Utah. That's almost a foreign country. Just kidding. Just kidding. I know I'll get mail about that. Cape Town. Cape Town, South Africa. Wow. We have a lot of scenes like this in the Adirondacks. Big rocks, big mountains in the background. Not, it's not so much an ocean or big giant lakes. Do you get out and paint much in the winter time? Uh, very rarely. Um, I mean, this winter it's been really mild up here, so I've gone out a couple of times, but um, I'd say about 20 degrees. That's my limit. Um, <laughs> if it's if it's sunny and 20 degrees, I could be out all day, but uh, if it's cloudy and windy, uh, I'll, I'd rather work in the studio. I get it. Well, it's nice. One thing I like to do is to pull down other plein air studies I've done in the past and then do studio paintings from them. Yeah. That's, that's kind of been my, uh, my MO for the last few years is the, uh, the summers are always busy. So you're out doing plein air. Um, uh, I do a lot of plein air events, so I'm on the road a lot. And then in the winter, it's a perfect time to come in and work in the studio. Yeah. Get those big pieces done. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a very snowy winter so far, although there, I guess there's a big storm hitting parts of New York right now. Oh, yeah. We got a little, uh, little snow this morning here, but I don't know, maybe an inch or two. Nothing to write home about. So is this Lake Michigan that you're on? Um, so I'm, I'm on, I live on uh, Lake Michigan, but um, this is Lake Superior. Oh, it's yeah. up in the up far, far north. All right. I'd like to come and paint up there sometime in Door County. I, I've never gone to the Door County event, but maybe someday I'll put together a group and we'll go painting in, in Door County. Oh, I definitely should. Let's see if anybody in the, in the chat has any interest in doing that for a retreat in the future. 
One uh, kind of fun thing about Door County is because it's a, a narrow peninsula that um, basically runs north and south, you can, uh, you can go out and do a sunrise painting uh, on the water and then uh, drive 15 minutes to the other side of the peninsula and do a sunset painting right on the water. How oh, fun. But you got to wait uh, the time. So how do you overcome the confusion when you're sitting there looking at that and that water is just constantly moving? Uh, well, squinting is always a good, uh, good idea. Um, you can just think about, uh, you know, basic value shapes. Uh, you know, it's the same as, as any type of uh, representational painting. You're just trying to get shapes of color, uh, shapes of value. So you can start to identify, you know, my shadows are right here, these uh, yellow highlights. I can tell that's where a rock is just under the surface that's starting to catch some light. Um, so you're not trying to ca capture every single ripple. Um, it's kind of a fool's errand. Uh, so really, you know, get a simple version like this, and then you can start to add nuance and uh, more detail on top of that. But Bake the cake before you put the decoration on it. Exactly. So now that I have a little bit of this edge right here kind of defined, I can start to bring some of this uh, blue sky reflection into uh, this area over here, which will start to break up that shape a little bit. So you're carrying a little of the shadow color in over there. Yeah, so so this lighter blue, this is where we're seeing the, the reflection of the sky, but this would be more the, the face of the wave that's facing us. So we're actually seeing into that wave. We can see into the water. Yep. So it's gonna take on some of that greenish color. So that's one of the things that's uh, that's so tricky about water is that you're seeing all these colors, but it's hard to identify what's actually happening, why you're seeing those colors. Yeah. Guys have questions, put them in the comments. I want to know what everybody did for Valentine's Day last night. What did you do, Mark? Oh, I was just painting all day yesterday. And, uh, my wife's out of town, so it's me and the cat. Just hung out and watched oh, TV. Lucky you, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well so i got up at one o'clock in the morning and well yes yesterday at five o'clock mark i walked out on my dock i'm in the um, central florida area on the coast and um at five o'clock we watched a space launch watched a rocket go up and then there was i i went to a restaurant last night and I was talking to this lady. Uh, there were a bunch of people who had badges on. I said, are you here for a convention? She says, well, no, we're here for a launch. I said, well, you got to see it then. She says, no, we saw that one, but there's another one tonight. I said, what do you mean? 
She said, yes, we are we're sending a lunar lander up to the moon tonight. I said, I had no idea. So I stayed up or I got up, went to bed and then got up again at one o'clock in the morning and watched it take off and watched it land. It was so cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that was a, like the ideal Valentine's Day. <laughs> So you're giving it a little, no, you're not using pure white there. No. So this is uh, white with a little uh, India yellow. Um, it's very rare that I'll put just white uh, on the canvas. Um, Cause light, light always has color, whether it's warm light or cool light. And uh, if you just use just straight white, um, it can often feel very chalky a little too cool, maybe, depending on the white you're using. I have titanium white on my, my palette, so um, it tends to feel a little bit cool if I'm not, uh, not careful with it. This is looking pretty good so far. So as we're coming uh, up this way, um, the water's getting shallower. So we're seeing more of these, these warm uh, colors and the, the value is getting a little bit lighter. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I want to continue that trend. And also keep my, my darker shadows more out here. But uh, the deeper the water is, um, that shadow won't be as dark. Uh, okay. It's almost like atmospheric perspective. Um, the, the more water you're looking through, the less uh, less contrast you're going to see, uh, depending on how clear the water is. Okay. I'll tell you what. Why don't you give me a feel for what you're going to do uh, when we get back from our break? So what's next? We're coming up. You're going to you're going to kind of define some of the rocks in the shallow water. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll probably. Um, Add a few more highlights down here, crisp up some edges, um, and then I'll kind of resolve this area right here where the water is meeting the rocks. Okay. Well, we'll be right back. Mark Anderson is our guest, and this is Art School Live. We're here every weekday at 12 noon Eastern, and we would love for you to subscribe to us, of course, just uh, on YouTube. Just hit the subscribe button and make sure you look up Art School Live. We'd love to have you, and of course, follow us on social media. My name is Eric Rhodes. I publish multiple art magazines and newsletters, and um, and I love art. Uh, we have a big event coming up, and Mark actually is going to be part of that event, teaching of some of the world's leading artists teaching on Art School Live. It has made the difference in my world. I get invigorated. Today was just fantastic. I love it. It's just brilliant. I mark it off on my calendar. It was amazing. I need the community. I always wanted to go to art school. I feel like this could be it. The amount of value that is delivered is incomparable. When I did your first plein air live, I was only breaking into plein air and that just opened up my world. Every day I say, this is the best day. And again, it's another best day. <laughs> I'm taking notes, I'm watching what people are doing. I really am very grateful for the opportunity to just look over the shoulders of these great artists. It has taught me not only better plein air, it has made me a better studio painter as well. You know, the lineup is just so amazing. Thank you for introducing all these wonderful new artists to me. Everyone you have on here is fabulous. You learn something from every single teacher every single time, and it's just brilliant. This has made the last three years really bearable. Somebody like me really can't get to a convention. You know, this is really special. I need 
people to paint with even though we're not all physically together. But then the relationships that are formed, I think that's what's really long lasting. It's just really fun to, to see people that you've you become friends with, you know, throughout the years. There's always something to learn, no matter how many years you've been painting, or if, if you're a very beginner. It has exceeded my expectations and I've already signed up for next year. This is my second year and I definitely signed up for next year. This is my fifth live event. I was so happy, I went for it. You know, this is really special. Hey, we hope you join us for Plein Air Live. It's got a huge number of faculty members. Some of the top Plein Air painters in the world really help you get a feel for the whole Plein Air world. Just go to pleinairlive.com. We have uh, a whole lot of other things going on. For instance, we have Paint Tube TV, which has over 600 pro-produced art instruction videos uh, in a really super duper quality, and that's at painttube.tv. We also have a retreat coming up in the Adirondacks. Uh, the Spring Retreat, paintadirondacks.com, is what I call the Publisher's Invitational. No longer is a Publisher's Invitation required. Well, this is your invitation, I suppose. Um, and we get about 100 people. And last I looked, we had 25 seats left, which is very early to be selling out. So love to have you there. Then we have Fall Color Week, which is coming up. This year, we're going to paint in the uh, Carmel Monterey Coast. And it's just going to be spectacular. And we have... Uh, half of that is already sold out. So got to jump on these things when you can. Now we're going to get back to Mark Anderson. Mark, take it away. We're going to get back into the reflections. Yeah. So working in the reflections, kind of working with the, uh, the transparent uh, water down here. So I'm just going to build up some more highlights on these rocks. Um, I was thinking about this bigger rock right here. And I'm not not in love with it, so I think I might move it up and kind of redefine this edge right here, which it's a beauty I'm not of, sure beauty about. Oil paint. Right now. Yep, exactly. As soon as you notice something isn't to your liking, get it out of there because it's not going to do anything for the painting while it's sitting there. So because these rocks are underwater, I do want to make sure I don't have too many hard edges. Keep those edges soft and it'll be a little more natural. Oh, uh, I never knew that. That's good to know. I mean, the, the shallower the water is, you might see some more hard edges. So, you know, if we were focused in over here um, where it's, you know, six inches deep, um, you'll see a lot harder edges, but here where it's a, it's a few feet deep, uh, it'll be a lot softer. Guys, tell us in the comments where you're, where you're watching from. You'll have a chance to win a uh, prize today, a subscription to Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine. You started to say, and then I stepped on you. I apologize. What was that? I said, uh, I apologize. I stepped on you. You started talking. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, 
I have, uh, I have come from a family of uh, four boys and my wife comes from a family of five girls. So we're both very used to being uh, talked over. <laughs> <laughs> we're both middle childs too. So that's, that's part of it. That's very unusual. Usually middle doesn't end up with middle. Hello, Pakistan. Okay, who who out there has tried this? Put something in the comments. Have you done this? Have you tried doing this? Are you are you getting anything out of this? Is this helpful? Please put a comment in. You want to talk uh, briefly about the colors you have on your palette, Mark? Sure. So I have a, uh, a variation of a, a warm, cool palette, uh, which means uh, a warm and cool of each primary. Um, so for my, uh, for my reds, I've got cadmium red, uh, cad red light, and then uh, alizarin crimson. Uh, for my yellows, I've got uh, cadmium yellow deep and lemon yellow. Uh, for my blues, I've got, uh, I actually use a, a cobalt teal and uh, ultramarine blue. And then I've got a few extras on there. So uh, for a really warm yellow, I've got a uh, India yellow, which is really nice and transparent. Uh, I also have a cobalt blue and then some of the earth tones. So transparent red oxide, raw umber and uh, yellow ochre. And then I use a titanium white. So I've got, I don't know. 13 colors on there, something like that. All right, good. Then I'll, I'll uh, you know, swap in some colors here and there. So sometimes I'll have a phthalo blue, uh, which I have a love-hate relationship with. And we then, all uh, do, yeah. Yeah, it's so, so powerful. Yeah. I took it off my palette. I, it just was getting everywhere. <laughs> Kathy Wright says, he's an amazing painter. I like his comments about depth of water changes and colors. Doug says, very helpful. Water is what I need most instruction on, especially streams and falls. Any tips for waterfalls? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, with, uh, with moving water, so, uh, you know, rivers and streams, uh, this same sort of stuff will all apply. The further back the stream goes, you're going to have more of this effect. Um, whereas when you're looking down below you, you're going to see through the water. Uh, it'll just be a lot more shallow. With waterfalls, I like to think of them more like uh, I would trees. So you, and you're not seeing through the water nearly as much. Um, so it's it's almost uh, like a uh, like a solid form, um, just with much softer edges. So you'll still have a highlight, you'll have a shadow, um, but really poorly defined edges. Okay. We, we're going to be painting waterfalls in the Adirondacks this, this uh, summer, this June. We, we have like 12 different waterfalls, amazing waterfalls we go to. Oh, it's beautiful up there. Yeah, we've got, we have one that's 80 feet. We walk down to the bottom of it and paint. It's incredible. All right. So now I have most of this pretty well blocked in. So I can pick a couple of these highlights and maybe define some edges a little bit more. I kind of like uh, this rock right here. So just put a maybe a darker shadow right next to it.
Suzanne Stevens says, yes, this is really helpful. I'm surrounded by the Lake Erie shore, the nearby Mentor Marsh, and our Grand River. This demo is great help in getting me fired up to get out there and get painting. All right, Susan. Fantastic. That's the goal here. Get you inspired. <laughs> Really looking good. Guys, if you're enjoying this, give a heart or a thumbs up or a comment or something. When that happens, it increases views and uh, we get up to a quarter million views when you guys start pushing it and that's good for mark and everybody will learn about him that doesn't already know him come on guys let's do it yeah let's do it baby <laughs> dale cook says our rocks are lumpy and covered with seaweed <laughs> I like to paint rocks that have moss on them. Uh, Lainey ne Nice Francis asked, Mark, do you have a focal point in the large rock with the darkest crevice? Um, so I, I think of more uh, like a focal area, which is kind of this area right here. It's not one particular rock. Um, I mean, I've got my greatest contrast here. So some really dark darks up against some really light lights. Um, I've got this shadow versus highlight contrast. Uh, and then I've got some of these, these sweeping lines kind of bringing your eye in this area right here. Okay. So it's not so much a specific focal point as much as a area. Hello, Dubai. I think Dubai is the furthest distance watching today. Although maybe not Pakistan is watching. Okay, where are you watching from that you haven't put a comment in yet? Tell us, maybe you'll win the uh, the furthest distance award today. Do you typically like to put some kind of a line where the water meets the, the land to differentiate it? Um, in some areas, I, I don't wanna do a, a total outline. Um, so like in this area right here, just this value contrast uh, is good enough. Um, now here, it, it creates a more a little more visual interest to have some of this uh, this lighter white um, coming through. Right here, I'm thinking about actually losing this edge and maybe just uh, doing a little smudge. Uh, because it's so close to the edge of the canvas, um, I don't want to draw too much attention right there. Okay. Hello, Israel. Welcome. Okay, what did you just do here? Uh, just softening that edge. So I just used my palette knife to uh, kind of loosen that up a little bit. Hello, Belgium. Patty asked, will this be repeated? Yes, it'll go on replay. And everything we've ever done is on YouTube. Uh, there are hundreds of them. We started... Uh, the first week of COVID lockdowns and we did it seven months in a row for seven days a week. And then we went to five days a week ever since then. So you can find it all on YouTube at art school live. And we do it every weekday at 12 noon. So if you go in and subscribe, that's the best way to know, especially if you hit the little notification bell. And when you subscribe, that's a beautiful thing. And now you're getting into the nitty gritty. Yeah, yeah, it's time. <laughs> well, you got about five minutes, so this is your timing is pretty good. All right. So yeah, I really I would just continue like this, kind of putzing until it until it feels right. 
um, you know, more refining shapes. Um, I honestly probably wouldn't do too much more in this area right here um, because again, this isn't, you know, I want this to be interesting, but not so interesting that it distracts from everything else. You don't want to draw the eye there. Yeah. I see Sheila from Maggie Valley near Asheville. Sheila, we're coming to near Asheville. We're going to be a Cherokee for the plein air convention in May. It's almost sold out. It's world's largest uh, event for artists together, teaching and painting together. You need to go. You're so close. It's first, first time we've been that close to you. Hello, Hawaii. I need to check out Maggie Valley. I may have to go paint there. Everybody's talking about it in the chat. So that's really interesting. Soften that edge, but you know when you see that light spot, it's a rock. Yep. Hello from the farmlands of Lowell, Indiana. I grew up in Indiana. Okay, so what, what what would you be doing to put a final touch on this painting? If if you had if you couldn't finish it on camera, what else would you do? Uh, yeah, I'm just more tinkering around with this stuff. Um, I might maybe define one of these uh, rocks down here more in the foreground a little bit more. Um, maybe uh, kind of refine some of these waves just a little bit more. Um, maybe soften the horizon line. Um, that feels just a little bit too crisp for me right now. Um, yeah, not not a ton more than that. I guess this area right here does feel a little unresolved yet. Uh, maybe just one more brush stroke. That's all it needs. This one right here. Just one more stroke. Oh, there. wow, what a difference. Yeah, here. just needed a little bit darker value to make this rock pop a little bit more. Okay, terrific. So you're done. That's it. Well, why don't you come on camera so everybody can see how what a good looking guy you are. <laughs> see, what did I tell you? <laughs> Mark, thank you so much. You were a true inspiration today. Well, thank you, Eric. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, well, we love it. And uh, if you guys want to watch replays of this, it'll be on YouTube. And of course, uh, we'll be replaying it, putting it out there on social media as well. Mark, thank you so much. We'll, we told everybody how to find you on Instagram, what your website is. It's all in the chat if you guys want to find it. Mark, thanks again, and we will see you on Plen Air Live. Yeah, thank you, Eric. I'm looking forward to it. All right. You did a great job today. Mesmerizing demo, as, as Susan uh, said. All right. Bye-bye. Well, thank you guys for tuning in today. Uh, we're here every day at 12 noon weekdays, and we'd love to have you back. I'm Eric Rhodes, and thanks. Have a terrific day. Bye-bye.